Swing Nation, people grooving together. Sonny Allen is a multi talented performer from New York City and one of the last direct connections to Lindy Hop as it was dance at the Savoy. Sonny is known for his suave, smooth style on the dance floor, which he continues to demonstrate today with his frequent partner, Margaret Batichuk. More than a Lindy Hopper, Sonny is an accomplished tap dancer, singer, Latin dancer, comedian, and musician. We were honored to get some time to talk with Sonny in San Francisco while he was in town for Swinging at the Savoy in February. I came out of Harlem years ago. Uh, I don't consider myself a, a a swing dancer, a Lindy Hopper, or a tap dancer, because it puts you in a box. They categorize you. Once they categorize you, you'll never be an entertainer. It all depends on what you want to be. If you just want to do social dancing, that's one thing. If you want to be an entertainer, learn everything you can about dance. Nowadays, you have to learn because you can't get a job unless you can go up there and do time. And when you do time, everything has to be good. Not just one routine, everything. And I consider myself an entertainer, not a dancer. Because the entertainer covers all spectrum of show business, singing, dancing, comedy. And I also study with Michael Carvin. I still, still play drums and everything else. So it's the whole thing. I was uh, I started my dance career when I was eight years old. Uh-huh. But I was a tap dancer. Okay. And uh, I came out of Ruth Williams and Henry Tan Dance Studios. You know, and Ruth goes back to her and her a sister and brother, which was called the Williamses. Ruth became, had a dancing school, Rosman, uh, was a teacher, and Pee Wee taught till the day he died. Pee Wee was really instrumental in teaching him, you know, and uh, he was something else, you know. And then I knew Henry Latin. See, you went to Henry after you came from Ruth. <laughs> Henry was downtown, Ruth was on 125th, you know. And so after you became, learned the basics and everything else, and you got advanced, you went to Henry. Working with Henry is ridiculous. You know, he just, I loved him though, mm-hmm. but he was, he didn't play at all. You know, you go inside there and you put you in the room here, said, all right, you ready? Yeah. He said, now watch. Do it. And you look at him and say, what? He said, do it. He said, I'll be back in a half hour. When he comes back in a half hour, you better have it. That was Henry Latang. What, what, what form of dance are we talking about right now? Is it a... Tap. Tap. Henry was, Henry was the guy that put, before Henry, a lot of your tap dancers used to tap, but they weren't a show. Mm-hmm. Everybody was individualized. Henry got all the dancers to be together. Mm-hmm. And then I used to sing in the street, and uh, I was with the group, the Hopkins. Yeah. So when we made Sunday kind of love, I'll never tell them all that shit. T- 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 tell us a little about the Hopkins. We all came from 115th Street, except for Willie. Willie Winfield came out of Brooklyn, but uh, and he was the lead. Cedar lived on 119th Street. Uh, William and the rest of them all lived on 115th Street. Really, the uh, the leader of the group actually was a guy by the name of Chisholm, but he left the group, and that's when uh, Willie came in. And up the street from there was. Uh, uh, which called uh, Love of Patterson and the Five Grands. How, how long were you involved with, the, with this group? I mean, you guys... Well, I didn't stay with them that long because uh, my mother wouldn't sign a contract. Mm. I was too young. How but old were you? 16 years old. Whew. 
And I wanted to go out on the road and she said, you ain't going to you going to finish school. So like, you know, okay, so I got mad and everything else. And when I got out of school, I went to service. I joined the service. I always try to get out of things. So I formed a singing group. And everybody liked it. So now I was doing the officers' clubs, the NCOs' clubs, and everything else. So I never had to go up there and do guard duty or none of that shit. And I did that, you know. Then I traveled with that. You know, I was in Kadena while I was in Korea and Japan and everything else, doing shows all over the place. When I came out of the service, I had a friend, we said, we're going to go down to Savoy, you know. So I'm sharp, man. I walk in the Savoy ballroom, man, up the stairs. And I see this girl, and she looked kind of, I said, God damn. Mm. I said, you want to dance? <laughs> she went up there and said, you don't know how to dance. And that changed your whole attitude, you know. I wanted to curse out, you know. <laughs> But I said, uh -huh. she looked too good. Uh-huh. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to learn how to do this dance. One of these days, you're going to beg me to dance. And I said it to myself, not to her. So I went to the Savoy, and I tried to learn how to do it. What was nice is that everybody at the Savoy danced almost alike. Because I was a tap dance, and I came out of Ruth Williams, I knew syncopation. So I did things a little bit different and everything else. So I went down that year, right? I won the, uh, the uh, semifinals at, well, at the Savoy and then at the Apollo Theater with Duke Ellington. And then we played Madison Square Garden, right? Me and my partner. We go down there and dance, took the whole thing. I wasn't supposed to win. I wasn't even the click, right? I come back up to Savoy and I have my medal on and everything else. That same girl came over and said, uh, you feel like dance? I said, no, I don't want to dance. <laughs> is it? So and that ain't bad enough. So she wound up working for me for 30 years. Is, is it true that this, this girl was sugar? Sure, Pretty sugar so salt. <laughs> <laughs> and who taught me? Was her husband, George. George, yeah. George Sauber. Yeah. Savoy, you know, had three names. It had the track, the land of the happy feet, and the Savoy. So everybody called it different. You know, they said, well, I'm going up to the track. You know, it's still talking about the Savoy. You see, so when you had that, the Savoy was like a track. It was like this. The bandstand held two bands. That was the only place in New York that I knew of, and I don't think to this day, a lot of people didn't realize. Anytime you see women go to dancing, right? They dance and all of a sudden halfway through it, they take their shoes off and say their feet are tired. Never had to swore. <laughs> the reason why I have to swore is because the Savoy, they had springs underneath the dance floor. Mm -hmm. It gave like this. It's it. And that's, that was one of the things about the Savoy. Mm -hmm. What I consider Savoy swing. I don't say swing because it's terrible to say swing because everybody does swing. Whatever you're doing, if you call it swing, it's swing. Mm -hmm. You see, I'll never argue with you. But when you say, I do Savoy swing, and I see what you're doing, I said, no, we ain't dance like that. No, but you and Chuck, I said, I don't tell you like it is. We didn't dance like that, so what? That's where the problem comes in. Right. You see, nowadays, you take out West here, right? You had the West Coast swing, right? All that happened there is that they danced to the blues. That's all it is. They went, they got it from the Savoy, came here, I'm trying to think of his dog on name, that uh, he's a guard out here for a West Coast swing. Uh, I, you know what I'm talking about, Chris? Hey, it could be almost anybody. <laughs> no, it's, uh, going back. You talking but, about Dean Collins? Or? Dean no, Collins. Oh, you talking about Dean Collins? Oh. Dean Collins came out of he went to the Savoy. All of them came out of the Savoy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
And he came out here and he taught that out here. Mm -hmm. And he was dancing off the blues. Now, if you listen to music, blues is not eight, eight counts. When you play the blues, it's 12. You may hear him say, a musician would say, man, let's do a 12 bar blues. That's it. And it's R&B. You see? So that's the difference in the two. And they call it, now they, that's the big thing, you know? And it's nice, but it's not Civil War Swing. Usually, your dancers, you go to where you are now, average one, they don't know nothing about Latin. Yeah. They'll tell you, I'm a swing dancer, right? And the other one say, I'm a Latin dancer. That's fine if you're doing social dancing. But after I went to Harvest, and I'm gonna come around. After I went to Harvest Moon Bar, because I used to sing with the harp tunes, I knew people downtown on Broadway. And Morty Craft and Monty Bruce had the label, Bruce Labels. And I went over to the office and said, Morty, hey, dig, man. He said, what? I said, man, I want you to handle me. He said, handle you doing what? I said, man, I want the Harvest Moon Ball, man. I'll be on Ed Sullivan's show and all that. Stuff. He said, so what? I said, what you talking about? Ed Sullivan. He said, don't mean nothing. <laughs> you know, that only showed me that you're the best amateur out of the rest of the amateurs. Now, do you have an act? Luckily enough, I was a tap dancer. So I started thinking, shit. Let me try some. So I did swing. Because swing, you only gonna do two and a half minutes. <laughs> if I book you on a show and tell you I want you to do 35 minutes, <laughs> what you can do the rest of the time after you do that little bit of swing? So because I was a tap dancer, I could do a tap routine and a swing routine. Now, I might have five minutes, right? That ain't enough to get all that, right? But I used to go to the Palladium. Right. So I learned how to do Latin dancing and everything else. So I was doing Latin. I did a cha-cha, I did a mambo. I could do a tap dance, I did this, right? Then remember, I used to sing with the harp tones. So I used to sing. So now I could do an hour show by myself. The person that changed the whole thing of show business was Sammy Davis Jr. He changed everything. Before, if you wanted to go on Broadway, you go down for audition, they want you to sing a song, and you sing it, and it's, you hit it on the head. Boom! God, I love you! Then you know the next thing they say? What? Can you dance? Mm -hmm. No, I, they'll hire somebody else that can sing and dance before they hire you. Right? Now, if you can sing and dance, say, can you act? You got to do everything. Oh. Sammy Davis did everything. You know, I used I worked with him in Atlantic City, but I worked with him down there. I, I met Sammy because I used to bowl with him. We used to bowl for the Actors League on 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 uh, 42nd Street. You know, and he would go up and tell me, "Man, do this." I said, "Man, I can't do that." Shit. He said, you could do that. I said, wait, there's only one Sammy, you, not me. But I learned from him. You know, he, he taught so many people all that. Dancing is like, I tried, I told somebody this and they said, you're crazy. If I had the perfect setting as a dance instructor, to teach, I would starve to death. Because the first thing I said, you come here, I'll sit you down like you are, and I'll take a jukebox or whatever, turn it on, and play a tune. And let you sit there for an hour, just listen to that tune. After that hour, I said, all right, thank you. I'll see you next week. And you would say, I came here to dance. I said, do that. You come back next week, I sit you down there, do it again. 
Now that's fine. You're trying to listen. Then when you come back the third time, I said, you know what I want you to do now? I want you to listen to that same thing again and come back and tell me what is the drummer playing? Just the drummer. Pick it out. Then listen to the bass. Listen to the horns. Listen, separate. And then what's happening, you wind up doing syncopation. You're playing syncopation off the bass line. The bass is carrying the tempo, not the drummer. Everybody you see in these schools around here, dance the drummer. Because they dance 4-4, four, four, not 2-4. Swing is 2-4. Chick Webb and them played 4-4. Four, four. So they didn't play like this. He played four on the bass foot. Boom, 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 boom. So when you did that, what, what did you just do with your head? I just bounced my head. Thank you. <laughs> so their body's doing the same thing. That's the way they danced in the 30s. But now what happened is that in the end of the 40s, with the advent of people like Count Duke, Ellington, uh, uh, even uh, Tommy Dorsey and all of them, they had still a big band, but they amplified the bass. Before then, you never heard the bass. That's why the drummer had to do this. But once the bass was amplified, the drummer doesn't keep the time no more. The drummer plays syncopation off the bass line. So it's going one, two, three, bop, two, two, doom, 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 doom. So if the bass is doing that, the drummer is playing two, four off that four, four. But do, do, bop, bop, do, but do, bop, but do, do, bop, bop, da, bop, do, bop. So now instead of doing this, you're doing this. I and think, it's moving. I think you just changed the way I teach from now on. <laughs> <laughs> My first, my first two lessons are gonna be easy. Just listen to the song, <laughs> come back, and come back. <laughs> the trouble is, if you do that, that same student you got, right? She'll be walking down the street, or he, and she, some of her friends. Hey, baby, will you? Oh, well, I was over the class. Yeah, what you learned? Oh no, I was just listening to music. He said, "You paying him just listening to music? You crazy?" <laughs> you understand? That's the whole thing. But it's good for you because once you hear that, now, once you start hearing, think of this. When you hear somebody, see, I'd rather have a person that don't know how to read work for me and play by ear than a person that knows how to read. I don't mind you learning how to read after you learn how to play. Not learn how to read first and then play. Because if you learn how to read first and then play, what's gonna happen is, if I take the chart away from you and say, play something, what you want me to play? That's, that's what you call improvisation. And you hear jazz. You play what you feel. You see, and that's the most important thing. When you go up there and take George Benson, one of the greatest guitar players in the world, right? He sings everything he does. <laughs> That's it. You take uh, Earl Gardner, oh, any yeah. of your pre oh, yeah. piano players. Mm -hmm. So when you, you know, it's your accent there. If, if it wasn't written, Everything, the note is the same. Instead of it, the note being. There's a reason why things are done like this. Now the same thing when you start dancing, swing. Mm -hmm. Listen, try and play. Make yourself another part of the band. Mm -hmm. You are nothing but another percussion instrument in the band when you dance. So you went ba do 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 ba ba do do da ba 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 da da ba da 
You know, instead of just ba ba da 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 da, there's no feeling. I tell my students first, sir, dancing is having a conversation with a person without opening your mouth. You talk with your eyes, your attitude. If you do two steps all night long, and if you do it together, it's beautiful. But if you do 25 steps with turns and everything, and she's stumbling all over the place, it's no fun. So what sense does it make? You know, the idea is dance with the person you're dancing with. That's dancing.